All right, hello, hello everyone. It's quite an interesting experience to be online for the, I guess, the first time because of the lockdown and um, it's nice to have you all here. So in this presentation, there's gonna be two videos and being asked that we would ask someone else to play those videos because of the internet speeds. So I'm just gonna kind of get straight to it. I'm gonna just share a screen. Oh, does our two at one as I would talk? Why, why her turn? People men never. What are you setting on her wing? People men never. Does our house is showing the video? See, why you tear that the small side is that? Why you tear? Uh huh, Roy Hyman, man, I was a damn. Why you tear that the small side is that? Se o turismo não dá, dá ter moro bruma não dá, só zada, wakruda, ah né, ah, romhei mana zé, tá lá, só zada romhei mana hora, ah, o zá manhã, manhã nisa lá ni, isso é zahi. Kamu yang dah ini waktu tiada, bau, tak, tak, tak tersorak, iwa pada, eh, tak boleh sorak, tahu dia ni nak sorak, tak, tak susut, tak susut, iya, ota, 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 ah, 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 dia ada, dia ada, ura sama. En 1990, año que se vio la destrucción del muro de Berlín, el filósofo Michel Seg publicó un pequeño libro titulado El contrato natural, en el cual describía el porvenir de un mundo radicalmente nuevo y desconocido. Mientras la lógica bipolar que dominó el planeta durante la Guerra Fría se desvanecía en la historia, una nueva orden del poder global estaba en ciernes. Sin embargo, para Michel Serre, las transformaciones más fundamentales que se estaban produciendo no eran las geopolíticas, sino bien más las geológicas. Este mundo en porvenir, que en este momento ya se hacía presente, será distinto por el hecho de que la humanidad se ha convertido en el equivalente de una fuerza natural. Así escribió, a partir de ahora, Habrá lagos de humanidad, los actores físicos en los sistemas físicos de la Tierra. Las acciones decisivas son ahora, de forma masiva, aquellas de enormes y densas placas tectónicas de humanidad. Estas imágenes no son metáforas. Desde el punto de vista del ecosistema global, nosotros, juntos, nos comportamos como los mares. Seg habla de la aparición de una nueva realidad objetiva, una otra naturaleza, una nueva edad de la Tierra. 
Las divisiones que una vez separaban la historia social de la historia natural se han caducado. Como los vientos soplan y cambian el tiempo, la humanidad ha asumido el poder de cambiar el clima. All right, that concludes the videos. Um, we will try and make them available, I guess, online for a smoother viewing. And um, I'm going to now dive into the presentation. Trees, finds, palms, and other architectural monuments is one of Tavares' ongoing projects, which began back in 2013. It is a collaboration with the Beau Chavant Association and is realized by Autonoma. From the early 1950s to the late 1960s, the Owe Chavant people, an indigenous nation of the central Brazil, were subjected to a brutal campaign of land dispossession and forced removals in order to create an open space for cattle farms and soy plantations. Officially known as pastication, this campaign was part of an overall strategy of territorial colonization that the Brazilian military described as occupying demographic voids. In collaboration with the Beau Chavant Association of Marai Watsedi, Tavares mapped the ancient villages from which they had been forcibly displaced in Chris? order to provide, yeah? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, your screen is not sharing. Oh, uh, is it not? Sorry to interrupt you there. Okay, I see that it is, um... all right, share. Can everyone see it now? Yeah, I don't know if, uh, if you want to just start from the top. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so here's the first slide. Um, okay. Thank you. <laughs> sorry about that. I thought it was sharing. I clicked the icon. All right. Um, so slide two. In collaboration with the Beau Chavant Association of Murai Watsedi, Tavares mapped the ancient villages from which they had been forcibly displaced in order to provide evidence of the ancestral possession of this territory. His methodology is based on the readings of various media, ranging from historic photographs and films to satellite data to the territory itself. The landscape and its representations are interpreted as documentary mediums 
archaeological services that bear traces and memories of the ancestral occupation of the land by the Shavant people. All the sites identified display a remarkable similar feature in that their patch of vegetation grew over an arc-shaped footprint of the ancient village. Made of a combination between medium and large trees, palms and other types of plants and vines, these botanic formations contain species that are associated with the Shavant traditional occupation and land managing systems. In many different ways, these botanic formations are the product of village design, being the equivalent of an architectural ruin, albeit not dead, but living. Can we claim trees, vines, and palms to be historic monuments? Is the forest an urban heritage of non-Western forms of design? Of design? The collective memory of the Shavant people remains alive in the living fabric of the forest. But most of this archaeological heritage is situated within private fenced lands to which they do not have access. As such, they are in danger of being destroyed by the advancement of agribusiness frontier. Tavares' research also examined a series of satellite images and aerial photographs of cartographic surveys. Despite the dramatic transformations in the landscape caused by widespread deforestation that followed the forced removals, some of the ancient Shavant settlements seem to have been so old and so robust that they left lasting marks in the territory, which are still, still clearly visible in these images on the slide here. Tavares' analysis identified several traces on the ground whose shape, size, location, and disposition indicate the former presence of indigenous settlements. Tavares, Tavares presents a draft petition submitted to the IPHAN, which is the Brazilian National Institute of Artistic and Historic Heritage, calling for these patches of trees and that bear witness to the ancient Shivan settlements to be considered and protected as architectural heritage. This petition contains a set of protocols, visual files, mapping, and field notes that identify these botanic formations as archeological sites, probing the relations between natural and cultural as um, landscapes that are defined by categorizations that shape colonial modern collections, archives and museums of natural and architectural history alike. The project undertook a series of field expeditions together with the elders of Marwat Sedi village. This was the video that you saw first to document some of the archeological sites on the ground. The elders who guided Tavares used to be warriors who led their communities in great geographic expeditions through their territory, a cultural practice known as Hormano that is totally eradicated by state policies today. They therefore have a very sophisticated knowledge of this land. And then this would be the video that you just saw. And then in the second work, Non-Human Rights, in parallel to this, this is the project that emerges. And it was written and approved back in 2008 after a decade long period of successive political convulsions. The new constitution of Ecuador is the first of its kind to include nature alongside human beings as a subject of law. The animist conception of the legal text, which grants fundamental rights to the elements such as rocks, mountains, river deltas, and the seas, introduces a radical legal epistemic shift that challenges the rigid borders between, between that which separates the world of subjects from the world of subject of objects. The natural from the social, and thus presents a critical stand on the essential tenets of the constitution of modernity. Non-human rights presents archive interviews and documents about the historic process that led to the formulation of the rights of nature and reflects upon the juridical, political, and ethical implications of its claims for the establishment of social contract between humans and non-humans. So that concludes Tavares's, Professor Tavares's presentation. And um, should you want to find out more, we can, you can visit the website here, um, polotavares.net, which I'll also make available in the text. So thank you very much.